ably and brilliantly representing Illinois' 9th District. And uh, Congresswoman Schakowsky, are you at the RNC? I sure am. Here I am in Tampa. Oh, my And I'm, uh, I'm so glad that you're back, Tom. Thank you. I am, too. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a scary time there. Yeah. But uh, I'm back, and, and, I'm, and I'm so glad to see you. Tell me, what's your sense of what's going on at the RNC? Uh, we, we heard these now uh, demonstrated lies from, from uh, Paul Ryan last night, at least five clear lies in his speech. Are, are people expecting that kind of thing to, you know, Mitt Romney to continue this kind of, you know, misrepresentation? Or is it going to be, I mean, what, what's the sense there? What's your well, sense? Well, my, my sense um, tonight is that, uh, well, first of all, Clint Eastwood is going to be speaking. I guess they feel they need a little pizzazz to make things more interesting. Um, that yeah. uh, Mitt Romney accepting the nomination may not be, uh, may not be enough. Um, but, you know, what we've heard, not only, not only lies, but I would say about 90% of this convention and the things that were said from the, uh, from the podium were about why you should not vote for Barack Obama, just trashing Barack Obama, sometimes just, um, you know, without any kind of um, dignity or decorum, um, and sometimes a, a little bit more subtly, not much. Um, but we haven't heard really anything that I have heard that speaks to the American people about what they would do to make things better. Right. A message to the middle class, a message to women. I know they've put women up there to, to speak to the convention, but still what you're going to, to do for women to protect our physical and economic health. None of that has, has come through at all. But I'll tell you, it, it's really true. Um, Paul Ryan, who I serve with, and I served with on the Simpson Bowles Commission. I mm -hmm. couldn't believe he brought it up. Yeah, Why isn't that isn't that amazing that he brought up the Simpson Bowles Commission and he said right. that Obama ignored the recommendations when Paul Ryan le led the charge on the Republican side to 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 shoot the thing down. There were no recommendations. There was no official report in part because Paul Ryan blew it up. Well, that's true, but you know, anything that suggested that maybe part of the solution would be raising taxes or raising taxes on the on the wealthiest Americans Paul Ryan, that was a no-go for him. No right. way was he going to support anything like that. And, and then we saw it in the, uh, in, in the Ryan budget, that yeah. better to uh, help millionaires over, over Medicare. Well, he's, he's signed multimillionaire and K Street lobbyist Grover Norquist's um, pledge to uh, swear fealty, if, if I'm pronouncing that word right, um, uh, swear loyalty to the billionaires uh, rather than to the, the, the United States Constitution. You, you know what, though? He's not just uh, a tool of the, uh, the millionaires and the billionaires and the Grover Norquists. He is actually the author and kind of the, the thinking behind many of the proposals that define the Republican agenda that is all about the, uh, the richest uh, Americans and cutting the budget at the expense of the middle class and all those who, spy, who aspire to it. Um, and they'll do whatever they have to do. But, you know, to lie about the Janesville plant, which anybody could fact check and everybody is, mm. the fact that he would say that Barack Obama promised not to close it and then a year later it was closed, yeah, under George W. Bush. Right. It's just a and And then... Even to bring up auto, why would he bring up auto when uh, when Romney said, let Detroit go bankrupt? It's right. just kind of surprising to me. They're so out of touch. It is. It is to me. And and the other thing that's surprising to me is that uh, the Associated Press now um, is using a brand new phrase. They're calling this uh, factual. Here's the headline from the AP: Ryan takes factual shortcuts in speech. They're well, looking. That's a nice they have way to put it. They're desperately looking for euphemisms for lie. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and, and with Medicare, let me tell you, my my theory is they just want to confuse Medicare beneficiaries. They, sure. They, they, they just want people to be not quite sure. And so they're going to repeat their lies over and over again on how they love seniors, how they love Medicare, how they love their mothers. Um, but um, I think they just want to fog the debate up enough so that seniors will be confused. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is uh, really quite extraordinary. It, it is. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt, back in 1944, called out the uh, Republicans and said that they were using the big lie strategy. He said, 
He said they learned never to tell a small untruth, tell the large untruth, because it will have a certain credibility associated with it. And uh, if, you, if you repeat it often enough, and I mean, he, he called out the Republicans on it, and here they are doing it. I'm curious. But that's it. I, I mean, and, and when you have enough money, that's where the millionaires and billionaires come in. When you have enough money behind those lies, and I know you talked about the, the move to amend and the Disclose Act, yeah. um, they're able to repeat those lies over and over again. Yeah. So uh, you said you, you haven't heard anything coming out of this convention about actual policy. But they do have a platform, and they do have a record. Yes. What does that platform say, and what does that record say about the range of issues that concern you and the various committees that you're on and the, 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 the things that you're, you know, your legislative concerns? Well, certainly I'm very concerned about the, uh, the, the plank in their platform that deals with uh, abortion without any exceptions for rape or incest or life of the mother or health of the mother, and uh, essentially um, saying, well, not essentially, actually saying that there ought to be a human life amendment as part of our Constitution that would enshrine the rights of uh, a fetus even ov over the, the woman and the mother um, in, in the Constitution of the United States of America. Mitt Romney can say what he wants about disagreeing, but I don't know that any effort was made to see that the Republican platform did not include that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it goes on. I mean, they even set up a commission to talk about reestablishing the gold standard. Clearly a, a tip of the hat to the, the Ron Paul people, but how embarrassing that's in their platform. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, it's that's so 1860s. I mean, it's so it's, 1860s, right? <laughs> um, and and speaking of the 1860s, I mean, it was 1867 when Colonel Drake drilled the first commercial oil well in the United States. They're still promoting 19th century energy solutions in the 21st century. Is anybody suggesting to the Republicans that this is the 21st century, and maybe we should be looking at you know these 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 gigawatts? Tre uh, tregawatts, I don't know, gazillions of watts of power that are falling on the earth every day in the form of sunlight and wind power? I, no, I mean, not, not only are they for, it's their, their policy really is drill, baby, drill, um, and to continue with fossil, fossil fuels, but they are absolutely opposed to, actively opposed to, any kind of other energy resources. And so we're about to see the expiration of the production tax credit for wind, even though we've seen a tremendous increase in wind power in the United States and supporting that industry, which has the potential to be very, very successful. Yeah. And of course, solar, we have more use of solar. There's a lot of consumer interest in these things. Um, in these alternatives, but the federal government continues to support oil and gas at about uh, $4 billion every year, $40 billion over a, a, over a decade, and they'll do nothing to take away those tax breaks, but they don't want any kind of public support for uh, alternatives. But and, and the other thing is they have in their platform, they talk about um, government transportation. They're against that. Imagine. Um, I think that's got, I think that may be a first in their platform. Yeah, no more buses, no more subways, no more federally funded airports, uh, no FAA. I don't, I, it's, it's pretty mind boggling. Isn't it? Yeah. It is incredible. Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, one of my favorite people in Congress. You are doing such a great job and always such a strong voice for progressive values. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you, and you stay strong and well. I will do my best. Thank you.